back again. Welcome back and uh, please give us the, the bread of life and may God be with you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, my brother. Um, I'm going to speak without a video. I'm in the middle of load shedding. And these are the times that we are living in and we just have to pray to God to sustain us and give us strength as we readjust to the new norm. And it looks like this is how things would be in the future, but uh, nothing shall stop us and nothing shall separate us from the love of Christ. Yes. And uh, I want to greet the saints and the family of God this morning in the name of our Lord and personal Savior, Jesus Christ. And thank you, my brother Benjamin, for the prayer. And thanks once again, my brother Jose Buile, for the introduction. And welcome to this platform. And we continue to pray. Let's bow heads quickly and say a word of prayer father in your name your name father not anyone's name not my name not the name of any one of us here pastors leaders evangelists and preachers and coordinators not the name of bishops and uh, political leaders but your name father we call upon you and we are desperate for you. We acknowledge that without you, we are nothing. And without you, we can't achieve anything. Without you, Father, we are doomed. And therefore, Lord, if you were to turn your back against us, we have nowhere to go. Lord, you are our only option, our only God that we have. And we pray that you speak to us this morning as we wake up to you challenge us father with your truth and help us to come to the place of repentance in jesus name we pray amen and amen thank you once again we have the next coming 15 minutes to continue on the very same subject that we touched on as of sunday why prayer why now and we dealt with reasons why we need to pray. And we pray that God would help us as we add one or two. And we will continue to cover even some more in the next coming few days. And to me, the Lord edify us and challenge us some more and uh, bring us to a place where we could realize that indeed the prayer had, has to be a lifestyle part of who we are and it must be intertwined with the fiber of who god has made us to be we have been made to be people of prayer while here on earth and we wish this was not the case uh, but we have to and this is the only weapon that god has given us to always be in prayer and what we covered was starting from the book of Luke chapter 11 from verse 1 and that would continue to be our text of reference even for the next coming few days until the end of the series and uh, there we see the disciples um, asking God or Jesus saying, Lord, teach us to pray, teach us to pray. And we covered that we cannot be taught on how to pray. We, we, we can try and run seminars on how to pray. But at the end of the day, it is uh, the sole responsibility and accountability of Jesus to teach us how to pray and we covered those few points number one that we need to pray because god's word calls us to pray number two that jesus prayed regularly and that prayer is how we communicate with god and number four prayer allows us 
to participate in God's works. And we dealt with the fifth one that says prayer gives us power over evil. And we read a number of scriptures just to support our case. And uh, today I want us to look at at least two more. And the first one that we're looking at, which is number six, is prayer is always available. The reason why we pray now is because prayer is available. We don't need to buy um, prayer. Prayer is there for us. And we have no excuse for not praying. Whether there's load shedding, but the prayer is still available. If there's one powerful weapon that God has placed in the hand of his children, it is the weapon of prayer. So we, we can always go to God anytime we wish. And Paul in the book of um, um, Hebrews uh, says to us in chapter 4, when you start reading from verse 14, 15, and 16, and somewhere he says, let us come boldly unto the throne of God. So we have to come boldly with confidence, knowing that we come into our Redeemer. You see, it's powerful to be on the side of God because you have no guilt. And that's why when you, there are challenges, when there's a mess, you always need to make sure you are covered by his messes so that you have access to him anytime and nothing stands before you. And the first John 1 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. And, and, and that's very powerful. So while we are on this point and understand that prayer is always available for each one of us, but we also have to make sure that we are available ourselves before God so, so that God can give us that access. We can have that confidence. We can never approach God in prayer unless we have made ourselves available for the available prayer that God has made available for us. So we have to be in the right place with God. So nothing can keep us from approaching God in prayer except our own choices and decisions. And that's why in the book of Romans chapter 8, from 38 up to 39, Paul speaks about who and what shall separate us from the love of Christ. And he goes down to say there is nothing that shall It cannot be death, it cannot be load shedding, it cannot be pain, it cannot be sickness, it cannot be COVID-19. Nothing shall separate us from the love of Christ. And we therefore have this confidence in him that we can go to him, come boldly unto the throne of God, that you may receive mercy and find and, and grace in this time of need. And that's the invite that God is giving us this morning. Prayer is always available. Prayer is always there for us to access our God and our Father. And I want to move to the second part, and we will bring this to a closure. Prayer keeps us humble before God. Prayer keeps us. The reason why we need to pray now and pray continually is because prayer keeps us humble before God. Humility is a virtue God desires in us. And when you look at the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 2, 22, and verse 4, Micah, chapter 6, just take note of those verses, Micah, chapter 6, also that talks about justice. And one of those points that God says the Christians, the believers shall have is humility. It is not just about having justice, but you have to be humble. Ephesians 4.2 also talks about humility. James 4.10 also says 
those that humble themselves. God is able to lift them up. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. And God, in due season, he shall lift you up. He shall exalt you. Prayer reminds us that we are not in control, but God is thus keeping us from pride. There's too many too much arrogance, too much pride amongst the believers. But God this morning is saying you have to pray because you, prayer humbles you. Prayer humbles you. And if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. That's what it says. It does not say they shall pray, but they shall humble themselves. You can't pray unless you are in a position of humility. You can't pray when you are in a position of arrogance and pride. Prayer keeps us humble. Prayer reminds us that God is in charge. Prayer keeps us closer to God. Prayer reminds us that whatever that we have, it is belonging to God and it is God that is in control. It is God that provides. That's why when you talk about stewardship, stewardship reminds us that God is the owner. None of us owns anything. That's stewardship. Prayer is part of stewardship. It is stewardship at practice, stewardship in practicality. Prayer keeps us humble. And therefore, whoever humbles himself, like this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of God, according to Matthew chapter 18, verse four. And I therefore want to stop right here on those two points that says, why should we pray? And why should we pray now? And number one, which is part of number six, is that prayer is always available. But while it is available, we also have to make ourselves available before God. And we have to live on the sight of God. Nothing should separate us from the love of Christ. Our sins must never separate us from the, the love of Christ. Our jobs and employment must never, ever come between us and God. Uh, relationships and marriages must never come before. It must never come in between. Our finances must never come between us and God. Nothing prevented from praying for whatever reason available on earth because God has given us the network that can never be interrupted by anything. We can call upon him. Yes, internet can be interrupted, but not the network of heaven. It can never, ever be interrupted. Never can it be intercepted by anything. We have the available slot anytime we want to approach the throne of God that keeps us humble. So we are approaching this time around to pray. We are humbling ourselves before God. And by so saying, we, we are saying, Lord, you are in charge a reminder that you are the creator and we are the creatures. And therefore, whoever humbles himself like this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of God. Our greatness is not in how we demonstrate it, but it is in how humble we become each time we have an opportunity of this nature. Humble yourself, therefore, and in due season, God shall humble Shall God shall lift you up and exalt you. May God bless you and keep you. May the Lord edify you in Jesus name. Let's pray together. Father, once again, in your name, we come and we approach your throne of grace and we do so Father, boldly. We have no doubt in our hearts. We have no fear in our minds. Lord, we come to you because you are our father. We come to you, Lord, because you called us. We come before you, Lord, because you have made prayer available for us. We come before you, Lord, because you are in charge. We are not. Lord, we want to pray that help us to move away from the driver's seat and allow you, Father, to be the driver as we become the passengers. We want to pray, Father, that you remove us out of our own homes as 
presidents, Lord, so that we become just residents and you become the president. Preside over our homes, preside over our own lives, preside over own, our own businesses, preside over our own relationships, preside over our own marriages, preside over our own spouses. Lord, we pray that take charge this morning as we humble ourselves and let you be the God that you should be, the God that you are, the God that you always have been, Lord, and forgive us for taking your position, Lord, Forgive us, Lord, for our arrogance and our pride sometimes. Forgive us, Lord, when we see some success. Sometimes, Lord, we forget who has pro provided. We forget who has prospered us. But this morning, Lord, we are coming. We are coming, Lord. We are coming boldly before your throne of grace. We stand in awe. We stand in acknowledgement of who you are. We stand, Heavenly Father. We say, Lord, this is your place, Lord. And we want to... This morning, Lord, also present this entire world, our governments, Lord, into your hands. Be God in those governments. Preside over the leaders that you have placed, Father, in place. We pray in the name of Jesus that you be, you be with us, Father, as we move into those prayer rooms. Amen.